need, you need to plug the other, <coughs> the other cord in. What do you mean, that's in? That's in? Oh, this too? Yeah. yeah. Look, thanks, Neil. I think they're you know, pretty fair comments at one level. Um, and I, I'll say this, some of you heard me say this before, but you know, I think the whole thing's a terrible situation and there is no winners in this whole process. I think it's a terrible legacy we've inherited. That's the first observation I make and I have you know, complete sympathy for everybody who's in, been caught up. Um, I think that in terms of your question of why is the government buying all the houses up front, actually before I get to that, a lot of thought has gone into trying to design the scheme that is addresses the, the information the government now has, which is that the advice the government has is the houses are unsafe to live in. That is the advice we've been given. Uh, and so in terms of that question of do we let people stay there for five years, there's a very difficult moral issue for well, government. You're letting them stay there for another eight months. It's, it's um, you know, I think, I think they could be, I'm happy to stay, you know, each house has got a different level mm. of, and of you contamination. Will be allowed, yes, you will be allowed to stay, we're not, the, the scheme does not require everybody to move out by 30 June next year. The 30 June cutoff is a point at which people are being asked to elect into the scheme. There then can be an extended settlement period so people can stay longer. But we will also, I mean, there will be have to a point where the government intends to bring in requirements for sealing up the house to prevent the health risks because you know, it's, we're also, the government's also now got people coming forward with litigation cases because they're saying, well, we're living in a dangerous house and you didn't tell us. You know, those matters will be resolved in the court and I'm not going to comment on that. But you know, I think there's a moral issue around to let someone live in the house for the next five years knowing that there is a genuine health risk and we've been told the houses are unsafe and we must demolish them. Government can't be in that situation either. I mean, that's the, the nasty dilemma here, I think. Why don't you just demolish the house now 
yep. and let him build a new one on the block yeah. because I assume when you take over the block, you're going to subdivide it because you can make more money out of it. So why not demolish his house now? And um, then pay him the money yep. to build a new house if the government's going to give these people money. So the way this scheme will work is that the house will be valued at full market value, assuming that Mr Fluffy's not there. Because, of course, the whole thing's worth a whole lot less with Mr Fluffy in it. Yeah. So somebody's house will be valued as if Mr Fluffy wasn't there. If they've done, you know, put a pool in the backyard, that'll be part of the valuation. If they've got marble bench tops, that'll be part of the valuation. It'll be a proper valuation of the house, and the homeowner will be given that much money by the government. The government will then take the title. Uh, and why? the advice is this is the most effective way to do it. Question, why? Because you're going to build on it, aren't you? I assume you're not going to leave it vacant. No, no. For the next let me finish. I'll quickly try and whip through this. Uh, the, the outlays on the budget under the sort of um, picture you put forward will be enormous. Yes. Absolutely enormous. Let me quickly try. Unbearable. And, and there, is a, there is another way to do it, as my friend over here said. Uh, to allow the people who want to stay uh, on their blocks not to stay there while the house, a toxic house, exists there, but to have it demolished and rebuild on it. There is no reason why the government should want to buy the block of land back. That's the money, I think, we're yes. Yes. Exactly. And, and there would be cost <laughs> savings. It's all also, around. though, it's, you said it's morally is not good for you guys, but we've been living in that place for more than three years before we bought it in two, uh, 2010 without knowing that, yeah, oh, it's great because it's been removed, the list of property has been removed, so everything will be safe. And so now for a couple of more, like another five years, do you think that it makes any difference? And I see some instances, people have been growing up there, uh, growing up in the house, or been living in the house for more than 20 years. Sure. Your argument about the morality to me, I lived there for 25 years. My kids are grown up. I just have a granddaughter. I yep. paid 2,000 bucks so they could visit me. Your argument about morality doesn't gel with me. The government, yeah. the institutions of government knew since 1968 and they didn't close a miserable, minuscule, small company. Yes, in 1990, 1989, they did a program that was botched, didn't work. 2005, an independent report, apparently the, the recommendations were not fully implemented and keep, people kept going. <coughs> in 2010, the same thing. End result, I lived there 25 years. My kids grew up and the options are, I gotta go. You know what? I'm not gonna vote for you or neither of the other two parties. To me, this is a disgrace. A scandal, a scandal that happens only in countries where I come from, developing countries. That's what this is. A complete scandal. 46 years of this shit. A scandal. And now you're telling me I'm gonna leave. Yes. I went and rang the task force to ask for two thousand dollars so that my granddaughter could visit me for, for three weeks, they said, no, that's not part of the package. It's a joke. It's an insult. That's what it is. I'm really sorry you feel that way. No, don't feel sorry. Don't feel sorry. Don't give me that lesson. Well, no, I do feel sorry. I don't, I, I don't want any compassion. I want a solution. Well, the government's putting a solution on this. It's not a solution. It's what I'm telling you here. There are, there are all so just before, okay. we go, well, before we go on... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and just run over why I think it works, or do you want to just keep giving me feedback? No, it's just also the solution that you said the solution is one solution for it all, but it's not. It's yep. out of 1,049, 21 of the houses that have the money and knock it down, if they got whatever the uh, gentleman there are requested for. And for another 1,021 houses, we just completely blank it with, you know, you buy, uh, this is the buyback scheme, you take it or you leave it. Basically, yes. there's no choice for us. Yeah, you're, you're in a, and you, for us also, we say like, okay, if you give us the price there, that's fine. But for me and my family, I don't want to buy any houses in Canberra anymore. And so could you please give us the same duty back, including the price that you give, you give it to us? Oh, no, 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 it's... We don't give you that. So uh, basically, just like yeah, you, we, the Mr. Fluffy homeowner, just completely loses. No, we, we, you have to remember, Shane, you're you're in a monopoly purchasing position. Mm -hmm. You're you're, you're uh, 
what you're saying is um, we've decided what this is. Uh, what you think, you, we're not negotiating. This is a, um, you call it a negotiated, uh, it's been done under as a negotiated purchase under the Land Acquisition Act, but it's not a negotiation. We're not having any say in, the, in this part of it. Uh, we're saying that there is, we don't want to cost you too much extra money, but we do want to have some say in how it's done, and we want to stay on our blocks if, if uh, for some of us do. Uh, sure. Most people won't <coughs> stay on their blocks. More, a, a, a big majority will, will sell up and go. But for those who do want to stay, I think you, you shouldn't abuse your monopoly power in this, in this case, and you should allow them to, to, to stay. Can I add to that and say that some of, us are prepared, some of us are prepared to consider the buyback option. But what's happening here is that the government's saying we're locking in the value of your home that we're going to purchase for you from you at 28 October 2014. We're locking you into that date. Irrespective of when it is that you, you buy back into the, into the property market. So I live in Wintangra, there's 17 fluffy houses there which will be lost. I, I'd expect probably at least, at least half of those people will be looking to buy another home. I keep recognising the same um, sad faces when I go to home opens. And, um, and you know, it might be six to 12 months before we find a home that we can afford and that meets our, meets our needs. Or might be a little better than what we currently have, so that at least there's some upside to this whole mess, that we don't just go flat across to the same amenity. Um, but, we, but the risk of a rising market, or an artificially created market, the risk of that is imposed on us, not on the government. So the governments, you know, um, we've, we've been exposed to, to, to health risks, whilst we've not been... A, whilst we've not been told of the health risks health risk we're exposed to, and now we're being exposed to further financial risk um, by the same government. So um, that, that doesn't seem fair to me. Also, we're paying um, stamp duty on top of, uh, for, the, for the, extra, the extra we might pay. So you have a rising market, plus there might be a little bit of extra amenity that I seek. I might spend another 50 to 100k, take another mortgage. But I have to pay stamp duty on that as well. Only on the 50 to 100 though, there's a full stamp duty exemption right. for new properties to the equal value of this home that you've sold. Yeah. Oh, but I'll make the case I shouldn't yeah, be paying sure. any stamp duty for a modest extra that's caused by the bubble and also just wanting a bit of extra amenity for my daughters. In terms of the bubble, there is some analysts who are saying the market is set to actually continue to drop over the coming six well, months. Well, we, 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 <laughs> no, in this town, who believes of you as thinking? Yes. Sorry, Luke, how, how do you want to operate? I'll, I've got a few points yeah, I'd love to make. Sorry, 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 just, sorry, I just noticed Luke coming out here. Shane, I just have one uh, question. Um, I have three clients of mine that are Mr. Fluffy um, house owners, and I'll just run through the scenarios with you. I have one who uh, has Alzheimer's and has gone into an aged care facility. Uh, mm -hmm. Day after his admission, he, uh, a letter arrived in the post advising him from the task force to do his house was Mr. Fluffy. Uh, it was subsequently picked up by his family. Now, this is a person who does not have mental capacity to make sure. decisions on his behalf, his own behalf. They have, I have assisted them over the last three months go through the ringer of having to negotiate with the aged care facility, the asbestos task force, uh, the Department of Human Services Centrelink in relation to accessing. Uh, hardship provisions because their house had previously been valued at $550,000 today it's effectively valued at nothing. The nursing, the aged care facility I should say, um, they have reporting requirements that they have to meet for the Commonwealth and they are now struggling to meet those for this particular gentleman so this will affect their reporting. Um, so that's just one scenario I'm sort of asking you to think about because I'm not, I'm not thinking when the government set up the $10,000 hardship was whether they actually considered the scenario, particularly for ageing people who need to access the money now for that scenario, they really need to be able to access it very quickly. So that's one scenario I'd ask you to consider. Um, the second scenario that I would ask you to consider is a client of mine who resides in Hughes. Uh, I'm based in the Hughes Community Centre, he's just around the corner from us. He is an 85 year old gentleman. He, uh, 85, it's on my head, I think. Um, he will take 85. Sure. 
very nice gentleman, but he speaks English as a second language. He has quite good spoken English, but his written English is uh, not as good. Not as good. Now, he received notification uh, from the task force, uh, and I'm sure there are other people in this room that have seen this in relation to things that have to be put up on the um, external PowerPoint areas, things like that, in the house, advising tradespeople to come up to the house, or other people in the room, obviously, I'll be talking about here. Now, the difficulty is, uh, this information that he is receiving, uh, because he doesn't speak good English, uh, sorry, doesn't write, read good English, it's not helpful to him, it's meaningless. So he actually came down to the centre and actually required me to meet him, my colleagues to explain to him what it was. He actually had tradespeople coming onto the premises the following day. So there's a, a real communication issue here with how, um, with how that is being conveyed. Uh, and a third... Can I, can I suggest that other people need to... No, no, I want to let Luke here okay, because why? Luke's going to be one of our speakers. So uh, I'm happy to read him by speaking to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, third, the third scenario that I'm dealing with is um, another gentleman who is currently in hospital with a lung related disease. I'm not sure if it's mesothelioma or exactly what it is, but he's in uh, Canberra, I can't remember if it's Canberra Hospital or Canberra Private Hospital. I had his file yeah. back in the office. His scenario is that he is also having to liquidate his home, which has been identified as a Mr. Fluffy House, but he's having to try and coordinate it from a hospital bed. Um, so what I'm sort of would ask you maybe to, to think about and go back and perhaps talk to some people at the task force is just to, in relation to some of these different scenarios where the communication becomes very important as to, as to what's happening and particularly when you're dealing with, uh, you know, as you see tonight, very, uh, very distressed people and um, people that are going through, um, through health and how, is that, how the information is being conveyed to them. And if you'd like to talk to me later, I can give you more specifics sure. about those three instances and I end up as I'm telling you at the moment, and my colleagues are definitely... No, I think what you've just highlighted, Luke, is that we in fact have 1,021 different scenarios. Yeah. And that is the massive challenge that the government's trying to deal with. Uh, I know the, ta the task force is trying to come to it with as much flexibility as possible and to help people on an individual basis as much as possible. And I had an hour with the task force on Monday afternoon because I had a whole lot of questions I wanted to get through as well. And they're... You know, it's very clear that they're thinking about it and trying to deal with all these kind of scenarios. I think that the challenge the government faces is that we've had virtually no help from the Commonwealth. Almost none. Mm -hmm. but can I ask a question? What's, what, why is that? Because my understanding is that the Commonwealth accepted yes. two-thirds um, liability, for want of a better expression. There is an old MOU that had that situation where the Commonwealth paid two-thirds one third, ACT paid one third. The Commonwealth doesn't believe that that applies anymore and doesn't believe it applies to the current situation for reasons that are unclear to me. Would it be a fair thing in view of the distress that this has caused many in the community to release the legal information, the legal advice the government has received on this? This would be fascinating to know what your legal advice is yeah. considered. I'm happy to take that on board. I mean, it's the Chief Minister's call, but I'm happy to put Why that to her. Chief Minister's call? Because uh, she is the lead minister on this issue. Oh. I just happen to, you know, I've just taken a keen interest in it because I think it's really important. I'm not heading the task force. and It might be actually, just in light of tonight's meeting, it might be useful to ask the task force to come up to the next meeting because they can answer questions in more depth than I can. The point I did want to come to around the Commonwealth thing is that we've therefore being left with the ACT government to bite the bullet on this. And coming to your earlier point, I mean, this is a 30, no, 45 year old legacy uh, that this, you know, we are, this generation is biting the bullet on. And I think that that's a really tough gig. We've had to try and come up with a scheme that is both fair to all of the individuals involved who've put in a, been put in a terrible situation through no fault of their own versus being fair to the rest of the community in finding a scheme that is affordable for the whole city. Now, it's going to cost the ACT government a billion dollars to uh, buy all these houses. There is a plan to then resell the land to recoup some of the money, but overall, there'll still be a net cost to the ACT government in the order of 
300 million or so. That's the best estimate we have at the moment. And so that's the, I guess, the very difficult line we're trying to walk. In terms of the point you raised, Luke, about the urgency, uh, the bill will go through the Assembly. We had hoped to do it next week. Um, the Liberal Party have asked to take it to committee for a week, so we're now having an extra sitting in the first week of December to pass the bill, and the money can start to flow from the 8th of December. So to your first case study, uh, who is literally waiting for the money to start paying the old home, as yep. I understood yes, the scenario, yes, he can be in before Christmas. And if the, he's in that desperate situation, I would encourage you, if you're sort of helping him, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to ring the task force. We want to try and get the people that need to. We've got a few people who've already bought a new house. And we're trying to help them avoid getting a bridging loan. So that this would be the similar sort of circumstances. Some people will be pushed through the process before Christmas that need the money right now. We expect to have the first 10 or 15 or 20 done before Christmas. It's interesting, Bill, that will also impose the asbestos management regime since from the beginning, from the middle of the next year? No, that's not ready yet. This is just a financial bill to allow the money to start to flow. That's all that's going through the Assembly next week. Or the week after now. But, yeah. um, there's probably other things I lost track of all the other questions. But... <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thanks, Sean. And, and, and thank you for coming to the meeting and facing some emotion. Right. No, and, it's, it's and, tough. And, it's, and answering yeah. the question. Um, you, you mentioned that the government is trying to be flexible. Uh, I think that allowing people to stay on their land is, is part of that flexibility. Uh, otherwise, it's all it's a hundred percent bank buyback, and there's no you're not really offering flexibility. Exactly. There's, just just on that specific point, uh, and this may not address your concerns, but the way it's set up is that the government will buy back the land, the blocks will be cleared, and then the person, if they've indicated they want to come back. Uh, the person who owned the land previously will be offered the first right of purchase off market. Of off the market. market of land. Uh, not necessarily. And, and, and possibly five years ago. This is five years later. This isn't really a viable no. or no, sure. no, it's not going to work if it was off market. It's not going to work for anyone. I would be surprised but if one out of a, a thousand can do it. It won't necessarily take five, five years for the block to be cleared. Mm -hmm. However, the government is going to try and batch the, dis the demolitions to get some economic efficiency. So instead of doing you know, one in Watson now and, and that, they will be batched to try and do 20 or 30 at a time. It's more cost effective and it means a suburb okay. only has the trucks sort of come in once for a month that's and then reasonable. the trucks leave. Yeah, that's reasonable, but the... So I, don't, I, don't want, sorry, I don't want to have half the block back. I, sure. I don't want to stay on half yeah. block. So, yeah. Sorry, just to finish yeah. that. So some, just to finish the timing thing, yeah. some suburbs could be done within 12 months. Others may take four years. That is that is true. Uh, in terms of the issue of the block, the government has indicated that blocks over 700 square metres that are suitable... That's 88% of them. I, I actually yeah. thought it was less than that. No. No. My advice is yeah. it's more like 70%. But, are you um, able to release the costing to us, uh, to us to see it? Because we, at the moment, we just, just do just the work that we have There does seem to be some. Sorry. It seems to be very a lot to me. There does seem to be. You know, there are rumours going around town the ACT government will profit from this. <laughs> I can absolutely guarantee that will not be the case. Well, in my case, if the ACT government profit from my case. I'm not start. saying the whole lot, but just my case, you profit from my, yeah. my yeah. case. The government is yeah, being very honest about this in seeking to subdivide some of the blocks. The intent is to try and recoup some of the costs because there's. A lot of costs in demolishing, clearing the blocks, uh, dealing with the landfill at West Belconnen to ensure that the asbestos is safely encapsulated. All of those things cost money. The valuations are being done. That's fair enough, cost. Shane. But yep. we've got the, the, you can do that on the blocks that on, of the people want to sell. I don't think you should do that on the blocks that people want to stay on. And in R Street, there had been uh, four public housing truck, uh, public housing blocks sold in the last five years. They've all been knocked down and new houses have been built. None of those were subdivided by the government before they, they sold them. And they didn't have people on them that wanted to, to stay there and live there. Yep. The, the, our blocks do. The HD government owns 11,800 <coughs> public housing units yes. and it has a regular program of selling units. Mm -hmm. Why not, as you sell those, subdivide those blocks instead? Some of them are. 
I mean, there are significant well, sites around the city that have been turned into six blocks. In, in, in our street, two years ago, two blocks were sold side by side. They're much bigger than our blocks. Um, and yet, there's, there's still single house blocks. I'm, so, su I'm surprised by that, but that's, I believe you. Know, I just, no, it's, well, okay. Of course, but there is there a related is a issue as far as zoning and, and even for people who live near these. If you're subdividing blocks, normally if you're, let's well, say, in an RZ1, yeah. yeah, you'd be thinking that you wouldn't have, like, say, two places built right next to you, and then all of a sudden you find there is, even though you're in an RZ1 area. No, that's already legal in an RZ1. Um, to, to have a dual occupancy. No, 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 not, not to have a separate title. No, a dual occupancy. It's not the unit title. No. Yeah, well, yeah. Like use the they're going to resume the lease <coughs> and issue two new leases. Yeah. A dual occupancy, you know, yeah. a, so, from an urban form point of view, no, a dual occupancy and a unit title are not different. Uh, you still get two buildings on the block. <laughs> it's, it's legally different, I acknowledge that, I'm not disputing that, but the effect in terms of what you see is still two properties on the block. The flexibility that we want is to be able to stay on our blocks. There, there isn't any problem with the, the land, the yep. problem is with the building. I want, to have, I want to rebuild our house on that block. And you'll have that option? No, no, no. Yes, no we won't. No. Why we don't have that option, but we have to pay one. One. No, no, we, we, we don't have that option. They're going to sell, they're going to sell us half the block back yes. at the market price in yes. five years' time. Yes. So we're going to, we, yeah. so the big, the big the big it's only half the block. The, you the, those that want to say, you can't, you, build on, you, can't, you can't build across two blocks. In, in, the, in that situation, the victims, you, you could buy the whole block and build one house on. Yeah, but yeah there's an economic issue, I acknowledge that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just said you can't do it. You yeah, actually okay. can do it. Right. Okay. You can, but you yeah, but it's a cost issue. The cost issue being is that the victims are going to be paying for 50 years of government's failure. That's what it means. Well, there's no morality in that, is it? For those that want to stay. I don't know. I wasn't even born when this was like started off. Right. No, 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 no. All I'm making is whatever. I'm picking up a mess that some people are going to be like 68. Can I just um, inject? Okay, sorry. Another, another Go on. If I can inject just another issue. I think the sort of proposal that my friend over here is suggesting that the government not buy back the land from people who want to actually rebuild. Um, if, if that request were to be denied, where is the equity between those people and people who have been able to privately demolish and rebuild their buildings? Mm. They will retain their crown lease short, shorter than people who rebuild now under, under your scheme. But that's not a problem. But people who rebuild under your scheme will not get the benefit of being reimbursed for the demolition costs that they've gone into, which will happen for these other people. Uh, there, there is no equity in that at all. That's right. You're treating them much better than the rest of us. They, they have, yes, they have acted. And they end up in a situation that is different. That is true. I think, um, you know, we, someone... we didn't act on advice in the same way. We were advised by Sir not, yes. not to do anything before yes. the decision. Yes. yes. We, yeah, that's we. what the task force advised us to do. Yes. 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 Don't do anything, just wait for the decision to announce. And, oh, you want to do that. It's not going to, um, with the, the announcement going to be before what uh, you're going to do anyway. I was specifically told. I was specifically call it myself because I didn't let my husband call and I call it and that's what they, I was advised. Yeah. In terms of, I went there personally and I was specifically told that we wouldn't be disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess one of the issues that is floating around is some, I think you know, used the term before that this is not a compulsory acquisition and it, the government's legal advice is that if a compulsory acquisition was to take place, under that, under that legislation. Uh, the compulsory acquisition occurs at the price that the house is valued at today, including the Mr Floppy. Well, and so the government has sought to, in trying to be as fair as possible, has not taken that pathway, which would leave people, you know, we'd buy it at 200000 less than it's valued at without the Mr Floppy. The government is buying it at the value as if the Mr Floppy didn't exist. So we can amend the legislation to provide for that. That's just a bill. Uh, just requires a bill. We amend the outcome. Can I also say that in terms of flexibility, um, look, I'm, I'm open to the buyback program, and many others are. But I, I'd like the flexibility of being able to buy and sell on the same market. 
most people have that opportunity. You know, they, they sell their home and it's pretty well timed with the purchase of another place. Mm -hmm. But I'm forced to have a disconnect between the timing of when I sell to government and when I find a place that's suitable to purchase. And I'd, I'd be looking to buy over the next 12, 18 months and getting sure. out. My house is safe. Is safe. The asbestos report says that there's no asbestos in the, uh, in the living areas. So it's cool to be in there as long as there's no act of God. Um, so, uh, I would like that. That's, that would be, I think, reasonable flexibility within the scope of the, the construct of the program that the government's rolling out. The briefing I've been given is that the best advice the government's had from the property valuation sector is the fairest and least um, risky in terms of Risk, speculation risky to and the like. government, but not risky to no, us. In, including to the. As I say, and I know I heard the scoffs before, but the advice to government is from some in the market that house prices are set to continue to drop for the coming six months at least. Now, other people have a different view. Others are arguing there's going to be a property bubble, but the advice to the government from the property valuing sector is that's not the case. And so there's, you know, it could be the case that if prices continue to drop as they have in recent months, your house will be worth less in six months' time than it is today. But, but, and so but we're some still people buying and selling in the same market. market then. Sorry? We're still, I think Pax was saying we'd still be buying yes. and selling in the same market, which is what, yeah. the risk we don't want to take by gambling Sorry. against the price rises. And I have sought to look at that question, and I've asked that question very specifically, and the advice I've been given is that this is the fairest way to do it. Mm. And I, I hear what you're saying as well, and this, you know, it's part of trying to get the best balance.